When the switch is in position A, the capacitor will charge through resistor R. When we throw the switch to position B, the capacitor will discharge through resistor R. There is what is called a time constant for how long it takes the capacitor to charge or discharge and for the electric field across the capacitor to build and decay. There is also a time constant for a magnetic field to build or decay around an inductor. Here is what the voltage versus time plot looks like for charging and discharging a capacitor. Voltage is the y up and down axis, time is the x left to right axis. Notice that the curve is not a straight line. We're most interested in that 63.2% point for charging the capacitor and the 36.8% point for discharging. This is called the time constant for a capacitor. The time constant, which we call tau for a capacitor, is R in ohms times C in farads. The formula for generating that plot of voltage versus time is V equals E times the quantity 1 minus E to the T over tau power, where V is the instantaneous voltage, E is the applied voltage in volts, T is the time in seconds, E is the base for the natural logs, and tau is the time constant. If we use that formula, the applied voltage is 100 volts, let's say, then at time T0 the voltage across the capacitor is 0 volts. At one time constant the voltage across the capacitor is 63.2 volts. At two time constants the voltage is 86.5 volts, etc. Notice that this does not plot as a straight line. Also notice that mathematically the voltage across the capacitor never quite reaches the full 100 volts. Here is a plot of that equation with the 1 tau, 2 tau, 3 and 4 tau points all highlighted for you. Remember tau is the time constant. Here is the equation for discharging a capacitor. V equals E times the quantity E to the minus T over tau power. If the initial voltage E is 100 volts, then at time T0, the voltage across the capacitor is 100 volts. At one time constant, the voltage across the capacitor is 36.8 volts. At two time constants, the voltage is 13.5 volts, etc. Notice again that this is not plot as a straight line. Also note that mathematically, the voltage across the capacitor never quite reaches zero volts. Here is the plot of that discharge equation with the 1 tau, 2 tau, 3 and 4 tau points all highlighted for you. Here is what the charge and discharge plots look like for an inductor. Notice that they look very much like that of a capacitor just flipped. That is the voltage initially increasing in the capacitor, the voltage initially decreasing in the inductor. Here is the equation for the current in an inductor when it is charging. Inductor current and capacitor voltage look very similar. If we start out with 100 amps, then at time T0 the current through the inductor is 0 amps. At one time constant through the inductor is 63.2 amps. At two time constants the current is 86.5 amps, etc. Again this does not plot as a straight line, and note that mathematically the current through the inductor never quite reaches the full 100 amps. We've learned that voltage and current don't rise and fall together in capacitors and inductors. Let's look at the situation when an AC voltage is applied instead of DC. 
This graph illustrates how voltage and current across a capacitor charge when a DC voltage is applied. The voltage goes up and the current goes down. As soon as the voltage is applied, there is a sudden inrush of current as the capacitor begins to charge. Current tapers off as the capacitor is charged to its full value. The situation changes when AC is applied. From 0 to 90 degrees, applied voltage begins increasing. There is a big initial inrush of current. From 90 to 180 degrees, voltage has reached a peak. Current stops flowing. Voltage begins to drop. Current reverses and energy is returning to the circuit. In a capacitor, we say that current leads voltage. That means that current reaches a peak before voltage does. Here is a handy way to remember what leads what in an inductor and a capacitor. L stands for inductor, C for capacitor, E for voltage, I for current. Let's read from left to right. Eli, the ice man. Eli. Voltage leads current in an inductor. Ice. Current leads voltage in a capacitor. With DC, we have just one term to deal with, resistance. With AC, we have a second term, reactance. We can have inductive reactance, capacitive reactance, or both. Inductive reactance increases with increasing frequency. Higher inductance also causes inductive reactance to increase. Capacitive reactance decreases as frequency increases. Also, as capacity, capacitance increases, capacitive reactance decreases. When a circuit contains both resistance and reactance, either inductive or capacitive, the combined effect of the two is called impedance, symbolized by the letter Z. The resistance and reactance elements comprising an impedance may be connected in series or in parallel. In circuit A, the current is the same through both elements but with different voltages appearing across each element. In parallel circuit B, the same voltage is applied to both elements, but different currents may flow in each element. If there is more than one resistor in a circuit, you must combine them to get one equivalent resistance value. Likewise, if there is more than one reactive element, they must be combined into one equivalent reactance value. Inductant, inductive reactance, reactance is treated as a positive value and capacitive reactance as a negative value. Let's find the impedance of this circuit. Resistance values are plotted on the x-axis and reactance values are plotted on the y-axis. Assume that a current of 1 amp is flowing through both elements in this circuit. The voltage across the resistor is 1000 volts. So plot that value on the x-axis to the point 1000, 0. L equals 20 millihenries and F equals 10 kilohertz. So we can calculate the inductive reactance. As we learned earlier, inductive reactance equals 2 times pi times frequency in hertz times inductance in henrys.